Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for coming out. I mean, it is really amazing to see everyone here together. I am Christina Noel. I'm the executive director of the Anacostia Bid. And you have to know that this is a project that we are definitely in love with. And we've been walking hand in hand and getting it here with all of the wonderful people and stakeholders and, of course, our, our government leadership. Um, let me just also say that I want to thank and acknowledge our partners and key stakeholders that have made this moment and this transformational development possible. Tom Skinner and <laughs> thank you. Uh, Louis Dubin and of course our Madam Mayor Muriel Bowser. Very, thank you. No, thank you. Congresswoman Eleanor, Ho Horton, Eleanor Holmes Norton, how could I, yeah. <laughs> uh, Ward 8 Council Member Trayon White, Deputy Mayor Falcecchio, and of course Mr. Ian Callender because we have some amazing, amazing things getting ready to happen with Sandlot. So, and I know they're going to be talking a lot about that. Um, I. I'm going to have to put my glasses on because I'm going to run through this really quick. And ever since I started this job, I kind of need them. But um, <laughs> I want to just share some of the highlights of the partnership that we've, I've had with uh, Red Brick. It's been a tremendous one. We've made uh, a lot of strides and we have a lot more to do, but it is a fantastic partnership. Um, Red Brick has been intentional and focused and lockstep with the bid. Um, outreach to the community has, I, I, I've not seen the same um, from a lot of different areas. Uh, they've been a dedicated partner connecting through various initiatives, communities, processes. Notable um, is the art and cultural district that we're working on with uh, Muriel um, Bowser's office and John Felcecchio and the council member, uh, Tram White. Um, they have been 100% involved, and we really look forward to this project being part of that. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, I want to just let you know that um, Red Brick also helps throughout the community, not just here. So I'm happy and excited, and, you know, the Bridge District, welcome to the Bridge District. So... And just really quickly, all the other stuff with the jobs that it's going to create. When we say connecting communities, it actually does that. Um, we are right across from an amazing bridge. So this being called the Bridge District is pretty cool. And I think I can't help come up with that name. So, <laughs> all right. So I'm going to leave this to the rest of the folks that really know what they're talking about with the regard to this project and um, hand this on over to Tom Skinner. Thank you, Christina, for those kind words and for all the help you've provided over the years to get us to this day. Welcome Mayor Bowser, Congresswoman Holmes Norton, Council Member White, Deputy Mayor Falcecchio, all of you who are here today to celebrate this moment. What an exciting day. What a beautiful day. Ten years ago, my partner William Passmore and I stood atop the Metro parking garage just a few blocks from here. We saw promise and possibility. Today's historic groundbreaking of the Douglas at the Bridge District is the realization of that promise and possibility. The Bridge District is planned to be a community like no other. It represents a vision for a future that is sustainable, inclusive, healthy, and filled with opportunity. I believe this is a collective vision of where we want to be as a society that is shared by Red Brick, our city's leadership, and our community. The groundbreaking today is for both the Bridge District as a neighborhood and for the Douglas, the first of six buildings to be built on this vacant land. This first phase of the Bridge District is intended to be a transformative urban neighborhood with proximity to nature 
and a focus on health and wellness. It comprises almost eight acres of land and will represent two and a half million square feet of development in total. Current plans envision that it will be home to approximately 4,000 district residents, provide employment for over 1,000 cybersecurity workers, provide workforce training for thousands annually, and include close to 100,000 square feet of neighborhood serving retail. Where we're standing today is the site of the Douglas, a unique apartment community with 750 residential units, approximately 80 of which will be affordable. The Douglas represents one of our region's largest ground-up developments designed to be carbon net zero from operations. It incorporates building design features that enable residents to lead healthier, more fulfilling lives. Over 80% of residents will have large balconies, many of which offer sweeping views of the great outdoors, the Washington Monument, the Capitol, the iconic Frederick Douglass Memorial Brick. In the building's lobbies and other public areas, we'll be using recycled wood from this very site that's been aging in West Virginia for several years. The building's indoor amenity space and five elevated courtyards reflects our vision for a post-COVID living environment. This includes private and communal co-working spaces for those working from home, podcasting, music room, maker space, and a presentation kitchen for the creative types, a party room, swimming pool, rooftop, indoor and outdoor lounges for the social types, children's play area, pet spa for those family moments, and a bike room, fitness room, yoga and mindfulness sessions for when one needs to focus on one's mind and body. Add in our adjacency to the Metro, the new Frederick Douglass Memorial Bridge, and the beautiful Anacostia Park with its miles of bike and jogging trails. And you can understand why we believe so many people will want to call the Douglas home. Much like the day that baseball finally came back to our city, I believe today's groundbreaking of the Douglas and this first for the Bridge District will be looked back on as an inflection point in the history of Washington. So it's critical that we do this right. How do we do it right? We do it through partnerships. Partnership with our neighbors and local businesses, partnership with our city's leadership, partnership with our natural environment, and partnership with our providers of capital. Let me start with the community. The Bridge District seeks to create a balanced and welcoming urban community that delivers benefits to neighbors living in Anacostia, Barry Farm, Fairlawn, and Congress Heights. We believe that by focusing on community, coupled with environmental and social initiatives, we can drive long-term successful outcomes for our neighbors, residents, tenants, visitors, as well as our investors. Redbrick recognizes the value and talent of the community and is committed to opening opportunities that increase economic security and build wealth. We're committed to recruiting and hiring Ward 8 residents. We're forging partnerships with locally owned businesses and we're proud of the internships for youth we're creating through a partnership with Urban Alliance. I'd like to take a moment to recognize Abdur Rakib Amrani. Stand up, please. <laughs> Abdur worked with, with Redbrick last year as a high school senior and has returned for the summer after completing his freshman year in college. We hope that Abdur will join Redbrick full time, but I have a feeling that his future lies in protecting our nation from cyber threats. If he chooses to do that, he'll have the opportunity to live and work at the Bridge District, just minutes away from where he grew up. At the Douglas, we're create, carefully curating ground floor retail space to host local businesses that meet neighborhood needs. You've already heard from Christina at the Anacostia bid. Soon, we'll be joining Ian Callender in a sneak preview of Sandlot Anacostia at the Bridge District, a 25,000 square foot outdoor cultural arts and entertainment venue where black entrepreneurship will flourish while enhancing food access in Ward 8. Atlas Brewworks, who's here, is also seeking to relocate its production facilities and bring a brew pub to the Douglas, employing almost 100 people. Thank you, Mayor Bowser, for supporting these great local entrepreneurs for the, through the Food Access Grant. <clears throat> Construction throughout the Bridge District is anchored by Ward 8 contractors, such as FNL Construction, who are also here today. What are we seeing? There we go. <laughs> Thank you. In addition, my partner Louis Dubin is leading our efforts to create a national center for cyber leadership at the Bridge District. The NCCL is designed to bring both jobs and critical workforce development programs 
to train students from Anacostia High, Baloo, Thurgood Marshall Academy, and other schools throughout the region. These graduates will protect our nation's infrastructure and industry from cyber attacks and strengthen their local communities. Our partnerships with government and leadership have been instrumental in making all of this happen. I knew I'd tear up here, but Congresswoman Holmes Norton, what can I say that has not already been said about your service to Washington and to our nation? You fought for civil rights in the 1960s and are still fighting the good fight and getting into good trouble today. You're fearless, tireless, and an inspiration to all of us. We wouldn't be here today without the work you've done to bring us the Frederick Douglass Memorial Bridge, Homeland Security and its many agencies at the West Campus of St. Elizabeth's. I'm sure I speak for everyone assembled here today when I say that we'll look to repay your leadership and service by doing all that we can to help deliver on your vision of a popular point in an RFK that fully realize their potential to serve the needs of the residents of the Douglas Commonwealth. <laughs> Mayor Bowser and Council Member White, our work together at the St. Elizabeth's East Campus is transforming those 180 acres into a healthcare hub. Whitman Walker's new facility and the Cedar Hill Regional Medical Center are bringing healthcare services where they're most needed. In addition, We've delivered and are delivering hundreds of housing units, many of them affordable and many for sale. Indeed, this week and next, we're welcoming an additional four new homeowners at St. Elizabeth's. Red Brick is proud of its, thank you, Red Brick is proud of its contribution there, and it couldn't have been achieved without your support. We look forward to continuing this partnership as we build out the Bridge District. Our partnership with the environment is also foundational to everything we do. Look around and some see highways and construction sites. I see walkable, bikeable neighborhoods interspersed with public parks, restored wetlands, outdoor recreation set on the banks of an active and healthy Anacostia River. By embracing nature, we seek to promote positive, physical, and mental health outcomes for all who live, work at, or visit the Bridge District. Today, we are breaking ground on what may become the largest scale climate positive development in all of North America. <clears throat> we begin here at the Douglas with a design that pushes the envelope for environmental sustainability by targeting net zero carbon from operations. Our building design reduces energy consumption by more than 30%. When fully built out, we anticipate that most bridge district projects will use either mass timber or carbon sequestering concrete. Indeed, on the adjacent parcel, we're already in preliminary designs on the largest mass timber residential building on the East Coast. To achieve all that I've described here requires a lot of capital. It is our fundamental belief that by embracing long-term societal and demographic trends, whether it be around sustainability, social impact, or technology. We're developing communities that are attractive to residents and employers alike, and will become increasingly so over time. Consequently, our financial partners can feel confident that their capital investment is secure and will appreciate. We thank them for the trust they've placed in Redbrick and the role that they are playing in delivering positive change. As its name suggests, the Bridge District is about bridges. The Bridge District and the two physical bridges, Frederick Douglass Memorial Bridge and the 11th Street Bridge, connect the Capitol Riverfront, Buzzard Point, the Navy Yard, with existing neighborhoods east and south of the Anacostia River. The Bridge District is also a bridge to new jobs and economic opportunities for local residents. It's a bridge to new ways of living. Red Brick is proud to partner with the city, the community, and our investors on building these bridges. And no one is better suited to help us celebrate this moment than the Honorable Muriel Bowser, Mayor of the District of Columbia and future Governor of the Douglas Commonwealth. Well, Tom, those were lovely, lovely uh, remarks. And I am just delighted to be here at the Bridge District. And Christina, I want to congratulate you on coining an absolutely perfect phrase 
uh, to describe, there you are, to describe uh, what will be built here and how it will connect uh, to the very aggressive uh, and bold vision uh, that we have for transforming communities with the support of the community. Uh, what I know is that no matter where I go in Washington, D.C., people want the same things. They want great housing, great safe neighborhoods, good schools, recreation opportunities, and opportunity, uh, opportunity to raise their families and live their best lives. Uh, and that is exactly what we focus on in supporting a bold economic development agenda. I am very proud of the work that we've been able to do with your council member, Trayon White. Give council member White a big round of applause. And I'm also very proud uh, of our Congresswoman and what she has been able to deliver for us right here in Ward 8. Give Congresswoman a big round of applause. Tom, you hit it on the head, uh, and I know that uh, Congresswoman Norton's body of work uh, and her vision uh, for how to be, I used to say good paying jobs, now I'm going to steal something from Mitch Landrew, high paying jobs, uh, to bring high paying jobs uh, to Ward 8 and all of the District of Columbia is what truly will allow us to make sure that everybody has a fair shot uh, in this city. The truth is we're the most dynamic city, county, state anywhere, I was going to say in the United States, but anywhere in the world. We have a talented uh, population. Uh, we have people who are creative and hardworking, who go to the government, who do cybersecurity, you name it, Washingtonians are doing it. Uh, we have a beautiful looking city. Uh, look at our bridge, isn't she lovely? Congresswoman Norton and I, that may be our favorite thing together. Um, and if you ever have a minute, she'll tell you about the 17 years uh, that she focused on it. Uh, I'll tell you about all the fights that happened in my administration to get it done. Um, but we did it. Uh, and we did it. We got a beautiful project. We put a lot of D.C. residents and D.C. businesses uh, to work in the process. And now we're here uh, talking about how 750 people will call the Bridge District home, how we have a focus on inclusivity and affordability and sustainability, how we will mix uh, all of the amenities that everybody expects to be at their fingertips, especially now that a lot of people have been working from home for the last two years. They want it right there. So whether it is recreational opportunities, computers, they want the ability to have you know, invite their friends and have parties, uh, and they want to be able to walk um, to get to all of the things that they enjoy in life. Uh, so this is why it's so important that we connect this parcel uh, to all of the great things happening in our city on the east and west sides of the beautiful Frederick Mc Douglas Memorial Bridge, and I'm very proud of that. I am also happy to hear that Sandlot and Acostia will be opening. Ian, thank you for your vision. When you have, uh, I don't like to call us a little town, but we're compact, right? So we have to maximize the use of every bit of space. Uh, and San, what Sandlot sees is that there are some passive space or some unused spaces that need to be used, uh, that people need to come together, have some fun, have some drinks, listen to some music, uh, and then get back to their lives. So I am proud that Sandlot and Acostia uh, will find a home here, uh, in addition to the sand lots that you've opened across the city. I also am proud of the work uh, that we have done on food. You heard Tom talk about it a, a little bit. Uh, and one of the things, and I know the Congresswoman and the council member know this is true as well. 
uh, that people tell me that we have to work on for Ward 7 and 8 is access to more fresh food. Uh, with grocery stores, sit-down restaurants, and healthy food options. Uh, and that's why the Food Access Fund that we created has been so helpful. It has helped us deliver on a model that I know is working uh, for the city. And that is when we have a successful business like Ian's that have opened other places in the city and been successful, the city should partner with them to open in Ward 7 and 8. And that has been our model. Uh, so we're going to be also providing an additional seven grants to food businesses that are opening in Ward 7 and 8. And I just want to take a minute to mention them. So Miss Toya's Cajun Southern Kitchen is coming to Penn Branch. Duffy's Irish Pub is going to come to the Stadium Armory Metro in Ward 7. The Tropical Smoothie Cafe will open in the T Skyland Town Center. La Cabana Restaurant will be a full dining restaurant and bar located in Skyland. And Cheers in Ivy City is going to open in historic Anacostia. So we're very happy that they will be here. Atlas Brew Works, the Smokehouse at the Strand, also opening because of the food access investments. So I've said a lot. Um, and that was a long way of saying, I'm happy we're getting started. I'm looking forward to 750 new Ward 8 restaurant, uh, rest, uh, new, 750 new Ward 8 residents and more businesses and opportunities for all of DC. Thank you, everybody. And now I get to introduce our champion uh, on the Hill. Uh, and our Congresswoman for all eight wards who has delivered jobs and opportunity for all of D.C. Thank you, Congresswoman Eleanor Holmes Norton. Thank you, Mayor Bowser. Those were terrific remarks. Councilmember Council Member Traon White, my fellow Washingtonians, and ladies and gentlemen. You know, we got eight wards. Now we've got a bridge district. <laughs> I can't wait as we break ground here today to see a whole new neighborhood blossom in our city. I am particularly pleased to celebrate this groundbreaking of the Bridge District, which of course will be a something we need desperately, a mixed-use development offering housing and retail in Southeast DC. During my service in Congress, I've been service I've been successful in getting unused and underutilized federal land transfer to the District of Columbia to redevelop entire neighborhoods and generate tax revenue for the district. The enactment of my Southeast Federal Center Public-Private Development Act of 2000 and my Southwest Waterfront Development Act of 2012 enabled the thriving mixed-use development known as the Yards and the Wharf, which have reactivated both the Southeast and the Southwest waterfronts. Now we come to the Bridge District. That was made possible by the opening of the Frederick Douglass Memorial Bridge. In a city on two sides of a river, the Frederick Douglass Bridge became perhaps the most important bridge in the nation's capital. Thanks to our efforts in Congress, the Frederick Douglass Bridge became the largest public infrastructure project in the history of the district. It has become a shining example of federal infrastructure investment. 
For over a decade as a senior member of the House Committee on Transportation and Infrastructure and as chair of the Subcommittee on Highways and Transit, I sought and squirreled away funds in each appropriation bill until the 60% federal funding needed for this bridge was secured. Those dollars are now hard at work supporting an important connective issue that holds our city together and is critical to the future of our communities situated along the Anacostia River. I look forward to the Bridge District bringing housing, retail, and other amenities to Southeast. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Welcome again to the Bridge District. You can clap there. I just said that to get a little bit of time to scroll up on my pad real quick. <laughs> uh, for me, this is a new day um, for Ward 8, uh, partly because this conversation for me started some six or seven years ago, uh, and Murray and Murray was a part of that conversation. And he put his stamp of approval on this project. And I think that's important to celebrate. And so I want to acknowledge Murray and Murray, also Murray Cutbreath, uh, who also was pivotal to seeing this project to fruition. And they've gone on to be with the Lord. Um, and then I, I, I talked to Tom Skinner today, and I realized that he had no hair back then. And now his hair is longer than mine. So it's been a while. I'm a, a strong believer that you can't conquer anything that you're not committed to. And there's been a lot of commitment to see this project to fruition. Um, what, I'm, what I'm also excited about is that we are honoring uh, one of the legends that, you know, had a place here in Ward 8, uh, the Honorable Frederick Douglass. Uh, give him a round of applause. I see that one of the main buildings of the six will be named after none other than the legendary Frederick Douglass. I want to thank uh, Mayor Emilio Bowser for her leadership. She's been steadfast in making sure that we provide everything that's needed uh, to make this project work. And also John Felcecchio is our Deputy Mayor. Um, I want to thank our fearless lead on the Hill, Congresswoman Eleanor Holmes Norton, who's also been pivotal to ensuring that we can utilize the, some of the federal government partnerships and lands to make uh, D.C. a uh, greater partnership in some of these projects, including the Frederick Douglass Memorial Bridge that we see behind us. Um, Christine Noel, for, for your leadership, I want to thank you. I know you uh, have, have been here with, uh, with helping businesses integrate uh, not just with this project, but along the business corridor, not just in Anacostia, but throughout Ward 8. We want to thank you for your leadership as well. Um, and I think that's important. Um, and so I want to thank uh, also Louis. Uh, we've had so many meetings, Louis. So many meetings. One thing about D.C., the gross domestic product for D.C. is meetings. Oh, I, I, oh my God, we have so many of them. And, and, and then Jason calls me and says, Council Member, did you put the legislation in to close the alley? I said, yes, I did, but the council just moved too slow. It's in there. And so uh, everyone ha has played a part, even those who may not be named, from the investors uh, to the federal partners um, to those who will be actively involved in the project. This project is not just about housing, but it's also a focus on health and wellness. And you may not know that we have some of the highest health disparities per capita in the country here in Ward 8. And so it's bigger than just a building. It's also about building on the people uh, who live here and who will live here in this space. The Douglas is a 750-unit flagship building of the Bridge District. It's designed to offer a lifestyle of convenience and an urban environment coupled with, a nat with nature in each of its residents' doorstep. Approximately 80 of those units will be designated for affordable housing. And we had to push on that. And so I want to thank you guys for being a great partner. And 29 of those units 
will be three bedrooms. I know we had a going back and forth about that, but I want to thank you guys for making some of those units three bedrooms. Because there are far too many times I get calls from residents saying I got to prove to live here or can't get here because uh, we don't have enough bedrooms, especially three to four bedrooms being built in the district. And so I want to thank you, Louis, for your leadership in making that amenity happen uh, for the re those residents who will live here. Um, I'm excited also about cultural arts that will happen here. Ian from the Sandlot, who's a, a great creator, um, I think that uh, you, you said, man, we got to have this in Ward 8. But in, at that time, we didn't know that Across the Bridge would also be part of Ward 8. And so we are excited to have you here to, to experience uh, some of the creative spaces that will be here to cater to the community as well. Um, I also see LaGreg Harrison here is also creative from the Museum DC. You can give them two guys a round of applause. I also heard uh, FNL, Freddie Winston, mentioned as well. Now, when I came here, I ran into Larry Green here. Where, where are you, Larry? Larry in the back, and he got his vest on, uh, and he is one of the phenomenal electricians, uh, and he has a lot of young ladies and young men around who, him who are from the community will be working on this project. Get him a round of applause. That's important. And that's truly been a highlight for me in the spirit of Marion Murray, just to be honest, that we make sure that we're building a community that's for everyone, right? And we want to build a community with uh, entrepreneurs and business owners who are from the community that's building a community for the community. And I want to thank all who played a part in this, and we look forward to the evolution of the Bridge District. Thank you. God bless. Good afternoon, everyone. So I'm John Falcicchio. I'm the Deputy Mayor for Planning and Economic Development. And uh, Councilmember White just closed out uh, the long hair portion of this. Uh, next up is myself and Ian. Uh, so hopefully by the time the project delivers, we'll have grown that out just like uh, Councilmember White and, uh, and Tom. But uh, just I want to thank everybody uh, for being here. There were a lot of thank yous, a lot of description of uh, this project and what it will mean to the community. But I want to talk to you a little bit about how this fits into uh, what Mayor Bowser has tasked us with doing in the Deputy Mayor's Office. So we've got uh, two main uh, focuses, and that is to make sure that we deliver on our housing goal that Mayor Bowser put forth, 36,000 new units of housing by 2025. Uh, and we also have to make sure that we support D.C. businesses and get more D.C. Uh, residents back to work. So with those two uh, tasks, here's where we are. So on uh, housing, uh, the 36,000 goal was actually launched in uh, 2019. And as of this date, uh, we're already in 2022, uh, we've delivered uh, 21,915 homes. Give yourselves a round of applause. So the Douglas and the Bridge District fit into that because you're going to be adding 750 more. But there's also a goal to deliver affordable housing. 12,000 units of affordable housing within that 36,000. And thus far, uh, we've actually delivered, since 2019, 4,165 affordable units. So the 80 here at the Bridge District add to that total um, and help us along the way. So there's an organization. Uh, it's called the Housing Association of Nonprofit Developers. And they put out a, a tool that they measure how we're doing in the District of Columbia when it comes to delivering affordable housing. And because of the commitment that Mayor Bowser has made to affordable housing and the support of the members of the council, Councilmember White has been a big advocate for this, uh, to really make sure that we have all the tools that we need to deliver on that goal. When you look at what the region will, uh, will uh, deliver or has in the pipeline, right, so under construction or in the pipeline, uh, when it comes to affordable housing, think how many units there are for a moment. If you don't know, I'll tell you. There's 24,000 units that are either affordable units that are either under construction or in the pipeline. Now, the District of Columbia represents 700,000 residents in a region of 6 million people. But I know you won't be surprised to know how much we uh, really have prioritized affordable housing and how much we need the region to catch up with what we're doing. So of those 24,000 units that are either under construction or in the pipeline, 
12,000 of those affordable units are right here in the District of Columbia. So half of the region's affordable housing is actually being built right here. So you should applaud for that. Thank the mayor for her leadership, Councilmember White for his support. And I know Congresswoman Norton's going to use that fact up on the Hill and tell her partners to step it up, to step it up and make sure that we all deliver on housing and affordable housing as well. We're also supporting D.C. businesses. So Mayor Bowser mentioned the Food Access Fund, which is a really important tool. I want to give a shout out uh, to Tim White, who's here. Where's Tim? Tim's in the back there. So he's been administering the Food Access Fund to make sure we do just what Mayor Bowser said, that we find Ward 7 and 8 businesses that are looking to grow and that we support them and that we're looking for businesses that are successful elsewhere in the district to come here to Ward 7 and 8. So Mayor Bowser is not stopping with the commitment uh, that she made, the awards that we're making today of $7 million. We're actually making sure in the next budget that there's an additional $23 million to support the Food Access Fund. Now, we need Councilmember White, we need you to fight for that at the council. Coming on Tuesday, speaking of the hair, they got, we got a little haircut already on what the council put out. So let's make sure we get that back up to $23 million so that we can support D.C. businesses to hire D.C. residents and really to come up with creative ideas. Uh, how many people have been to a sandlot before by a show of hands? All right, Ian. Wait, Ian, come up. Start coming up here. Ian, come on. Come on up here. So let me show, let's show Ian again. How many folks have been to a sandlot before? So we're doing pretty well. Looks like we're about halfway there. And let's make sure uh, that you get to the sandlot that's going to be delivered right here in Anacostia at the Bridge District. We're so proud to support it with the Food Access Fund. And Ian's going to tell us exactly why we're supporting with the Food Access Fund. You see some food trucks here. Uh, it's a cool place to hang out, like Mayor Bowser said, but it also is going to be what we like to call a food access point to help make sure that there's uh, another food option for residents in Ward 7 and 8 and really all across the district to come right here to the Bridge District. So let's hear for Ian. Let's show those hands again. Who's been to the Sandlot before? <laughs> Councilman Roy put up both. Thank you, sir. Congratulations. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Ian Callender, and I would first be remiss if I did not acknowledge my business partner and friend of 30-plus years, Kevin Scooty Hollins. Could you stand up for me, please, there, Scooty? Let the people see him. So when you guys see Ian, you see Scooty when it comes to Sandlot, so I just want to make that clear. Um, Deputy Mayor, Honorable Mayor Muriel Bowser, Congresswoman, Eleanor Holmes Norton, Christina, the whole front row, Councilman Treon, um, and the Red Brick team. I want everybody to know that the Sandlot Project, when it was first conceived, was on the other side of the old South Capitol Street Bridge in Buzzer Point. We were one of the first retailers in Buzzer Point in 2018 when we got our first lease over there. Uh, we paid the uh, late owner of the Secrets Nightclub over there uh, $50,000 to just do some fun over in a lot over there uh, in relation to the 2018 Major League Baseball All-Star Game. So the quick story is the Sandlot movie celebrated the 25th anniversary in 2018 when the MLB All-Star Game was in town. Scooty came to me with this idea and says, man, you know, I want to do a, a capsule for his Diet Starts Monday clothing line, which also was a bar on 14th and U Street. Show of hands to everybody that's been down 14th and U. It's the rebuilding. Everybody should have their hands up. Um, and I said, you know, let's expand that narrative and, and, and try to find a physical place for us. There isn't really a lot of spaces for us to assemble. Um, and that's unfortunate. So when we kind of sat back and said, let's create this, this cultural institution, this homegrown cultural institution, um, we, we obliged and we put our heads together and built it from the ground, literally. Um, so it is very momentous that we see this dirt box in front. And then what you guys see across the street is the location of Sandlot and Acostia, something that, again, the Red Brick team was very gracious enough to allow us to partner. These are partnerships. When you think about the operations and the work that we do in our communities, and it can't be done without the development partner. So can we give Red Brick a round of applause, please? 
And when it comes to the Food Access Fund, which again, Mayor Bowser, thank you so much, and, and Deputy Mayor and, and Tim White and, and Ms. Venice and the whole team at DEMPED, um, it is extremely important to, to know, being from Washington, D.C., there isn't a lot of food options, for one. Uh, D.C. was not a restaurant town 10 years ago. If you look at 14th Street, okay, it is now. You're right. <laughs> Ten years ago, on 14th Street, there wasn't a lot of places to patronize and, and have food. So now to reimagine that in the way that we've kind of created our Sandlot concepts, which is mobility, uh, sustainability, recycling shipping containers and converting them into shipping container kitchens and culinary incubators. We can potentially do workforce development with those shipping containers and mobilize and move them when necessary. That's extremely important, and the Food Access Fund is definitely key to make that achievement. And I also want to acknowledge Sean Townsend as well, because he's been extremely pivotal in us getting a lot of support from city government. So please give Sean, if you're here, I don't know if he's here or not. Um, but, uh, but with that, you know, Sandlot is a cultural institution. Again, food, music, entertainment, we've been doing this for some time now. Um, and I'm just overly grateful again to, to Mr. Louis Dubin and, and Tom and the whole team, Britt, you know, Trisha, Lindsay, uh, and everyone else. So please, before you leave, grab a cold-pressed juice cocktail because it's important and some food as well. And also Tiffany Penn. I want everybody to acknowledge Tiffany Penn because she is Sandlot, D.C. Tiffany Penn joins us from Eaton Hotel. She was a food and beverage director. Um, and as we grow, we hire local as the food access grant uh, suggests. Tiffany is a resident right up the street on Howard Road on the other side of the freeway, as is Ashley, another bartender that you see at the bar right now. She also lives off Stanton Road. And we do what we can to support our own. So, again, thank you guys so much. I can't wait to get started. Mr. Louis Dubin, please come say some words for the team. Wow. We're almost going to eat and drink. I'm going to be really brief. It is hard to be the last speaker on something this exciting. People have said everything. Um, but we do have a couple of uh, people here I would like to acknowledge. First and foremost, the community. I think a couple of us were talking, and Trayon, we were talking about it. 200 meetings where we listened a lot to the community over the last seven, eight years. It works, but you need committed people. And thank you to the community of Ward 8, the broader community, and your elected leaders, and the ANCs, 8A, 8C. Um, or we wouldn't be here today. A lot of listening, a lot of building of trust over the years. I think a, a lot of it really started with Mary Cuthbert, and, you know, she used to have to vet you up and down before you could even come to this side of town. And, you know, we spent a lot of time and energy. So thank you to the community. I also want to thank a couple of other people. Some of you know, some of you don't. Al Phillips. Where's Al? Al's right here. Al, stand up. Our first... Our first employee at the Bridge District nine years ago. And Al's been with us nine years. Thank you, Al. Thank you. That's why this whole area looks so good, because everyone's afraid to throw any litter or do anything they shouldn't be doing. Um, but thank you very much, Al. And I want to acknowledge a couple more people. The vision here, when I came back to D.C., I was born in the district many, many years ago. Um, the two people that really helped me with my vision, besides my partners, which you've heard a lot about today, uh, we're, I'm very privileged today to have with me because they showed me, you know, what was what they thought was possible. Um, Mark Newman is here. Mark's lived in the district for 30 years. Thank you, Mark, and an investor, and uh, Doug Braff, also very helpful. Right when I moved back, Doug is here today. So a couple of people that usually wouldn't get mentioned. Um, I also want, of course, to thank all the District of Columbia agencies: DEMPED, uh, DOEE. Uh, DDOT, DOES, TPR. Um, it's a lot of the it's a lot of the district professionals that are very important in putting something like this together, and all too often don't get thanked for their work. So thank you, the National Park Service, WMATA, ANC 8A and 8C, the entire ANCs, 
Cedar Tree Academy is a great neighbor right up the road to the right. And their executive director, Dr. Henderson. Did I see her here earlier, Dr. Henderson? Um, but thank you to Cedar Tree. Ian, thank you. Uh, I also want to thank Mia Duval. Is Mia here? Where is Mia? Where is she? Oh, she's all the way at the back. She is our muralist, and uh, thank you for the beautiful art that uh, you're providing. You know, we hope to have an awful lot of great stuff from you and other talented local artists. Um, our capital partners, which include Chatham Financial, John Marshall Bank, UBS, Alex Brown. Our architects, originally Portland-based, ZGF. Who's here from ZGF today? I saw some people. Right here, you guys can stand up. But unbelievable building, net carbon zero from operations, big deal, really big deal. I think it, you know, back then when we went to do this, we needed a West Coast architect that had those sort of sensibilities. Of course, they're from Portland or Seattle or San Francisco, but we're bringing them all here now. Um, but I very much want to thank those people that hadn't been thanked before. Um, thank you. Now, the most important person today that I'd like to thank is my partner and my wife, Martine Dubin. Thank you. I know she was waiting, like maybe I forgot to thank her or something, but she's here today. But thank you so much for your vision and your belief in all this when we moved back to Washington 10 years ago. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'd like to now invite the mayor to come up and take any questions. And I'd like to also invite Jill Gabado from CBRE, because we'd like to present the mayor before we take questions with a uh, copy of this canvas that Jill's graphic arts department created on the 15 minute city. And it's just beautiful. It's a whole orientation of the city where it should be, where, uh, where we are as part of the city. But that, that's for you. Everybody who's with the shovel, come on. As Louis said, if you are grabbing a shovel, please come up. For the photographers, we're going to allow the live feed to catch the first dig, and then we will do a second dig that will allow you guys to get your picture. So please, if you will, stay out of the, the line of fire of the live feed. Thank you. Down up front. Down up front. Cameras down. Everybody can look back to the live camera. 